Right. That counts. It's I the love, effort that counts. I love the Hawks. So, Travis, I want to know, and, and Randy McMichael here as well, longtime NFL tight end, um, how long have you wanted this job? You know, I got into the front office uh, business of the NBA about seven years ago with Golden State. Uh, so it's always, you know, for those seven years, that's kind of when it started. Uh, before that, it was always the coaching side. You know, I was an assistant coach in Golden State before I got on this front office side. So coaching was my passion. Uh, but I've done extremely well on this side, obviously. So I'm glad to be here. Well, you, I, I, I'm a fan because he was on the dog staff. So that's why. <laughs> but, you know, well, like Rick said, this job, when you look at this team, the way it's constructed right now, what's the first order of business for you? The first order of business is get with my front office, uh, which has been in place now, uh, running the ship for us. Rick Sund, uh, John Treloar, uh, Jeff, they've done a great job. Uh, everything's lined up for us, but I've got to get with them and start on the draft. And then I've got to get with Bud and his coaching staff. And if we start to look forward to what we're going to do in free agency. So those, those are the first two things. Shout out to Rick Sund. I love Rick Sund. I've known him for, I, you've known Rick for a yeah, long time. Great guy. Uh, great guy. So a shout out to Rick Sund. Right there. Um, and you mentioned the draft, so I'll, I'll go there with you. Um, are you a best player available guy? Or, you know, because I, I do mock drafts and stuff. What the hell do I know? I like to play GM. But uh, at 19, I've really, it, it seems to me like that's the area to take a big, whether it's a Justin Patton or a John Collins or a, a Harry Giles or somebody like that. It feels like that's kind of the big zone in the draft. Whereas at the top of the draft, as you know, it's kind of the point guards, the Foxes and the Balls and the Fultzes and guys like that. Do you look at it like that in sort of the, the cluster of where guys should go, or are you just a best player available guy? You know, uh, a little bit of both, if that makes sense. You know, one of the lessons I've learned in my past in Golden State is, you know, we've we've made picks early in the draft off need, and it didn't work out for us, you know, where we should have gone the other way and taken the best player. Uh, but as you get towards the end of the first round, then need starts to come in, and we've done that. When you look at us historically, you go back to the year that we drafted uh, Harrison Barnes at 7, Festus Ely at 30, Draymond Green at 35. We had a real hole at center that year, and Festus was a guy. Obviously, we liked all three of those guys, but Festus is a guy we liked. We didn't think he would be there at 35, so he said, you know what, we, we need to get a center because right now we don't have one on our roster. So it's kind of it's a little bit of both, if that makes sense. Now, if there's a guy that we think can be great, you know, we're we're going to take that. Uh, but if there's a need, and we've already filled some, you know, so it's it's a, it's a little bit of both. And I think the Hawks last year did a great job uh, with Torian. Torian's the guy that we were looking at. We had the 30th pick last year. We were looking at him, thought he might be there. They decided, you know what, this guy, this guy's a rotation NBA player. We like him, and, and they took him at 12. And people around the league kind of like, oh. But now, as I start to call general managers around the league, they're like, every team likes Torian. So that, that, that was a great pick. So you can't be scared to go against the quote-unquote mock draft guys. Uh, from your press conference, you said player friendly. You want this organization to be player friendly. Atlanta has a hard time of landing that big free agents. What does that mean when you say player friendly to try and get one of these guys to Atlanta? Yeah, so it's strange, right? Because there's a right. lot of guys that come and retire in this area. Right. There's a lot of guys that live here during the off season. You know, obviously a lot of some guys that have even grown up here coming up. So what by play friendly, what I mean is we have the new practice facility coming in, uh, which is going to be phenomenal if you guys have a chance to tour it, but you should definitely We'd get love over to. There. It's going to be great. Um, we want to take care of the players with medical stuff, with their families. Uh, you know, the old saying, "Happy wife, happy life." So we're going to treat the families first class. Uh, just little things. Sending them flowers if you know when we draft them or when we acquire them a trade or when we sign them in free agency, just things like that to make the families feel a part of the Hawks family as well. That's awesome. Travis Schlenk is in studio with Rick Hamlet and Randy McMichael. John Michaels is off today. Uh, and, and Travis obviously introduced earlier today as the head of basketball ops and GM of our Atlanta Hawks. Um, you mentioned Tori and Prince, and that, that makes me feel good that around the league people are recognizing because they got kind of a small sample of him. He didn't you know, get that starting job until late in the year. Um, I'm a big fan. I think there's big things for Tori and Prince coming up. We had him on, and I asked him, Tori, in a few years out, do you view yourself as an all-star? He said, most definitely. I talked to Tim Hardaway. He said, oh, yeah, he's going to be an all-star. What do you think is the ceiling for Torian Prince? Well, listen, he like I said, I've, I've been a fan of Torian and his game. Uh, and when you look at the way the NBA is going with versatility, being able to play multiple positions, being able to guard multiple positions, being able to make threes, Tor Torian fits that mold of the guy uh, that are coming in the NBA right now. Also, what's going to be real important for us is character. 
Tori and I met him in the practice facility a couple weeks ago. I said, do you remember? He goes, absolutely. Last year we interviewed him in Chicago. He's absolutely in the sh- – so he's top-notch character-wise as well. So I think sky's the limit for him as well. Love it. John Daly, Pat Riley. I mean, Jerry John West. John Daly. I, I don't mean, have much to do with him. I mean, but, but <laughs> Chuck I mean, Daly. Chuck Daly, I'm sorry. I mean, I'd have a but, beer with him, I but guess. But all these guys, these names. He's a hoop head, too. Hoop head. I'm a hoop head. All these, these, these legendary guys have endorsed you and everything. What have you taken from a little bit from each of those guys to make you are who you are today in this spot for the Hawks? Yeah, no, I certainly have taken little pieces from all of them, but I think the most important thing that I've learned from those guys along the journey is you have to be yourself. You know, you look at Pat Riley, he certainly has his style. You look at Don Nelson, he certainly has his style, and you wouldn't confuse the two styles at all. Right. But that's who they are. And to be successful in this business, you have to be yourself. Otherwise, you know, you played in the NFL. You know when a coach is being disingenuous. Right. Uh, so you have to be who you are. And, and I'm, I'm my own guy. I'm lighthearted. You know, I like to have fun. But I'm going to work hard, and we're going to do the, do the job as well. All right. Uh, our owner, your new boss, Tony Ressler, uh, in an interview with Dukes and Bell, the show that comes on after us, um, talked about the, the notion of taking a step back to take two steps forward. Have you talked about that? Has he used those words with you? Is that sort of a, a general philosophy that you believe in right now as it pertains to these Hawks? Uh, it, it's certainly a direction you can go. Uh, what I've talked about with Coach Bud uh, in the interview process with Tony and the rest of his group, Grant, Steve, uh, Rick, is I believe in kind of what we did in Golden State. You can – Remain competitive, continue to develop your young assets, accumulate more assets, which we have 11 draft picks in the upcoming drafts, and have the flexibility of when, you know, like an Oklahoma City can't afford to keep a James Harden anymore, you can put together the best package to acquire that player. So I, I'm not a proponent of, you know, quote unquote, blowing it up. I'm, let's remain competitive. Let's give the fans something they can be proud of. But let's maintain our flexibility and communicate, keep accumulating the assets so when the moment arises, we're able to strike. Okay. Well, I know you're not – you can't look into the future. I know you were saying that so you saw the, the process of Golden State take about seven years. Ballpark figure, how long do you think it might take here? Because, <laughs> I mean, I, us as Hawks fans, we are, we are, we're, we're starving. I, I understand. And – uh, it's funny. I've asked a lot of people, whether it be just when I've been having dinner or you know taking an Uber ride or whatever, you know, what what do the fans want? And the one thing that I have heard repeatedly is they want a clear message. I think the the what the people want is they want to know what the plan is, and then you know they'll accept that as long as we stay on the process. And so to answer your question, a definite timeline. You know, that, that's hard to say. But what I will say is our plan is to, to continue to accumulate assets, develop our young talent, and keep our flexibility. We have Travis Schlenk in studio. Very happy to uh, meet you and talk with you, Travis, on a huge day for you and your family and the Hawks. Um, who would you consider a bigger priority in free agency, Paul Millsap or Tim Hardaway Jr.? Uh, they're both big priorities for us. They're both big parts of this team. Uh, you know, Paul, obviously a four-time All-Star, has been – a key cog in the Hawks. Timmy obviously having a breakout uh, season last year. So, so they're both big priorities. We're going to sit down with the staff and we're going to uh, work at coming up with an option to try to keep everybody. What is your impression of, of your young point guard, Dennis Schroeder? Dennis, you know, I have not met him. As you know, he's over in Germany. Mm-hmm. He's playing with the German national team. But from the outside looking in, I would say this. He's a guy that's gotten better. He's a guy that can get to the rim. His jump shot's gotten better. I think he's a very underrated defensive player. He doesn't get a lot of love defensively because, you know, he's not getting steals. But he's, he's, he can be a ball hawk. You know, he can pick the ball up. He can turn a guy. Obviously, he played well in the playoffs. So he, he's a young guy that we have locked in in today's uh, economic system in the NBA at, at a very good deal for a starting point guard. No doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, but Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's four years and it's 15-ish over the next four years. 15 and a half, yeah. 15 Flat. and a half over the next four years. Correct. That's good money for Dennis Schroeder. That's like a team-friendly deal, in my opinion. Um, I, I want to ask you this. Um, you know, we 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 love the Hawks, and we, we kick around stuff as we talk here in our four hours on the Midday Show with Rick and John. And I'm just curious if you perceive any player currently on the roster who is untouchable in possible trade negotiations. You know, I've been asked that question before, and uh, the word untouchable is really hard, right? Because if uh, David Griffin calls me up tomorrow and says, you know what, we're tired of LeBron. You know? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to take a hard look at that. So 
every player on every team has a different value. Um, so I, I don't like to say no one's – we have players we like. Obviously, we are a very successful team for the last few years. So – but – you know, untouchable is a word I don't like. <laughs> I understand. I understand that. I, I can work with that. <laughs> what has your relationship been with Coach Bud so far? Because we all know that he was in your position, and now you're coming to place his job as far as making personnel decisions. Have you guys met with each other, and have you got a, a sense of what he wants as a player for his system? Yeah, uh, no question. One of the first big priorities for me was to come in here and to let Bud know that I'm here as a partner. Uh, you know, I'm not coming in as an authoritarian. Uh, I believe this full heartedly. He's one of the best coaches in the league, and we're lucky to have him. His staff's done a great job developing the young talent that we have on our roster. So I've come in from day one to let him know I'm a partner. We're in this together. I don't do a good job for the Atlanta Hawks unless Bud does a good job, and I know that. Uh, Bud and I have known each other through the years. Uh, when I was on the coaching side, we'd work camps together, but we were acquaintances. We I'm not. We weren't friends, so. One of the first big jobs I've had is to spend time with him and just share philosophies, um, you know, share stories about our past. And I'm very pleased because I was nervous just for what you said, you know, but Bud, Bud has been unbelievable. And I have no doubts that we're going to have a very strong working relationship into the future. Travis Schlenk joining us here in studio, the new head of basketball operations and GM for our Hawks. You said in the presser over at Phillips Arena that you and Bud share a lot of the same philosophies. And, uh, it, it, and obviously, uh, Tony Ressler called you an extraordinary collaborator. That's a hell of a compliment, man. So, but really, like, I'm a read between the line guy. I'm I'm a sports detective guy, right? I'm an over analytical guy. And what that tells me is that you and Bud are going to be putting your head together on some stuff. And obviously, you're in the spot that you're in. Uh, so you tell me if you have final say or not. But it seems like it is good. It what it sounds to me is it is going to be a collaboration. Yeah, listen, it doesn't do myself or the Hawks or Bud for that matter any good to go sign a player that he doesn't want to play. Great call. You know, we we have to work together. Um, ultimately, the buck stops with me. So when we screw up, we do something bad, I'm the guy you point the figure at. Uh, I understand that, and I accept that challenge. But, no, Bud and I are going to work together. We're going to do this together, and, and we're partners. Fantastic. Um, I, I know that, uh, and uh, again, by a Tony Wrestler at the press conference earlier, he said uh, that he received a great recommendation on you from the logo. <laughs> Jerry West. The man. And uh, Jerry West, and it's interesting now, right? His contract's going to expire with Golden State. The reports are that the Clippers want to maybe talk to him and bring him over there. Uh, and, and that is what it is. We'll leave that aside. Um, I'm just curious from you. What is the most important? You said you took things from all these guys. Can you give us a specific? What's the most important thing you took from the logo, Jerry West? I think the biggest thing that Jerry taught me is directness. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to talk or spend time with Jerry, but he's blunt. Yeah, he's honest. He, he really he is. doesn't mess around uh, at all. And, but he's earned the right to be that. Right. No doubt. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, but that's who he is. He's true to himself. Uh, but I think that goes a long ways when you're just direct with guys. And you know, as a former player, you know that if you've yes, got, sir. you know, you might not want to hear the truth, but the truth. It goes a long way. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Well. Directness. I love it. And uh, Bob Myers, recent executive of the year. Obviously, you guys have been uh, just a tremendous front office, man. You all have built a dynasty. <laughs> you have. I mean, we, we were just looking at we're, Kevin Durant. Yes. He's 28 years old. Are you kidding me? Uh, and obviously, you know. Why the, why the hell did I leave, man? There was that whole thing. Now, you're going to do great things with these Hawks, You're man. in a perfect spot. And look, Travis. You already got one, right? <laughs> well, I might give two. They have to oh, send me that one in the mail so, if we get I'll, three more wins. So I was going to ask you, like, you get a ring, right? Oh, yes, sir. Now, would you fly out for the ring ceremony and, and be uh, a part of that, do you think? That wouldn't be till next year, so we'll have our own opinion out here. But I like the, I like the answer. I like it. I like it. They'll mail it to you, right? <laughs> uh, Travis has a beautiful red tie on right now, too. Uh, but what, what's, the, what's, like, the most important thing that you have uh, learned working with Bob Myers? The thing that I've taken away from Bob is his ability to develop relationships. You know, Bob came, as, as you guys know, as an agent. And as an agent, that's, that's very key to be able to talk to the players, to develop that relationship, develop that trust. And, you know, I hadn't always seen that uh, coming up, you know, certainly from the coaching side. You don't, you don't see that side of the business uh, and in the front office side. But 
Bob's relationship, not just with the players, but with other people, because that's such a big part of where he came from. And it, it, it matters. It most certainly matters in today's world to have those relationships. And, and that's the biggest thing I've taken away from Bob is his ability to develop and foster relationships. So of all these people you've worked with, who is, uh, uh, who is the first one to reach out to you when the news broke that Travis Schlenk is going to be the head of basketball ops and GM of the uh, Atlanta Hawks? Uh, who was the first guy that reached out or girl who reached out to you? Uh, so I can't answer that question because I was actually flying from L.A. I had dinner with Tony and his wife, Jamie, in L.A., and I was flying to Atlanta uh, when Woj broke the story just like he does every NBA story. <laughs> yes. uh, so there's, I, there's no other scoopers. <laughs> He's so greedy. He gets every scoop in the NBA, right? So I, I landed and I turned my phone on and I had like seriously two to 300 text messages. Nice. Uh, you know, tons of emails. And I tell my wife, you know, how many text messages I had. She goes, you don't have that many friends. Well, exactly. said, That's true. I don't have that many friends, but that many people have my number. So it was, it was overwhelming the amount of support and congratulations I got and a really humbling experience. That's fantastic. We, we have a Solomon Brothers Diamond text line. All the fans are texting in, just enjoying listening to your message. Like you said earlier, I think people want to see a clear vision of what's going on, and the fans are really enjoying uh, listening a, to you right now. What we call the honeymoon. <laughs> ah, I love, well, it's going to be a prosperous honeymoon, man. Um, so uh, talk to me about the season that Dwight Howard had. Uh, he was healthy. He averaged a double-double. Um, and, and relatively consistent for this team. There were some things that I would have liked to have seen from Dwight that, that I didn't see enough of, shot blocking being one. Uh, but just give me your assessment on Dwight and, and his role with these Hawks going forward, as you know, two years left on his deal. Right. So uh, I've texted with Dwight. I haven't had the opportunity to talk to him. Um, but he, last year, obviously, you know, 13 rebounds, 13 points, double-double. The Hawks, one of the best defensive teams in the league. Dwight's a huge part of that. Now, you mentioned he didn't block the shots, but still, he's a huge rim protector, changing shots, coming over. Guys are scared to come in there when they see him, and he's a physical presence in the lane. So he he's a one of the best big guys in the league. So, listen, those guys are hard to find, and we've got one of those guys here to be the rock of our defense. All right, so Travis, uh, they were mentioning at the, uh, at the press conference, I, you were about um, the first thing you did was thank your wife. And, and your boss loved that. Tony loved that. Second, I thank the owner first. <laughs> so, uh, but but anyway, uh, uh, you, you've got a wife and you've got three kids. Uh, well, what are the ages of your children? Uh, ten, seven, and three and a half. You got the evolution chart going on there, don't you? <laughs> I don't know about that. I love it. I love it. Well, Travis, uh, we can't thank you enough for coming yes. in here. It is a pleasure to meet you and uh, get your insights and get your vision for the future of the Hawks. We will be at Phillips Arena. We will be in our living rooms watching on Fox Sports South. We will be in our cars listening to Sports Radio 92.9 The Game and cheering on the Hawks, man. Very good to meet you, and congrats Pleasure. again on the job. Yeah, Pleasure. No Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks for having much. me, guys. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Travis Schlenk, new head of basketball operations and GM of our Atlanta Hawks. We will be back to read between the lines in just a moment on the Midday Show with Rick and John on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game.